How to talk so teens will listen. Do you want to talk and actually get your teen to tune in and listen? Improve communication with your teen by making sure you're modifying your language so that it's welcoming and positive. Encourage them to listen and communicate with you by using open body language and being available more often. Your teen will be more open to talk and listen if you have a strong bond, so work on improving the connection between you. Communicating effectively with your teen. Remove distractions to make listening easier. Getting your teen to listen is much easier when you aren't competing with their cell phone or the television. Eliminate these distractions and your message is more likely to actually be heard. When you're planning to talk, turn off the TV and ask your teen to silence their phone or leave it in another room. If your teen is the type to feel intimidated by face-to-face -face discussions, try chatting with them during TV commercials. Just be sure to press mute before you start talking. You might also want to designate times of day that are tech-free so that you can spend quality time together. For example, you might make 6 to 8 p.m. the time when everyone in the family agrees to put their phones away and just talk to each other. When you're planning to talk, turn off the TV and ask your teen to silence their phone or leave it in another room. If your teen is the type to feel intimidated by face-to-face -face discussions, try chatting with them during TV commercials. Just be sure to press mute before you start talking. You might also want to designate times of day that are tech-free so that you can spend quality time together. For example, you might make 6 to 8 p.m. the time when everyone in the family agrees to put their phones away and just talk to each other. Keep your voice calm and level. Aim for a friendly, soft tone of voice when talking to your teen. Even if you're upset, try to use an appropriate indoor voice. If you find it hard to control your voice, it may be best to take a break and plan to have the talk at a later time. If you find it hard to control your voice, it may be best to take a break and plan to have the talk at a later time. Stick to the basics. One sure-fire way to make sure your teen listens, keep it simple. Giving too much detail or information at once may lead to them tuning you out. Try to be clear and direct when you talk. For example, avoid saying, Carla, I know I told you to wash the dishes. You never listen to anything I say. Maybe I should ask one of your friends to relay the message since they're the only people you pay attention to. A simpler directive might sound like, Carla, the dishes need to be washed or you'll lose your phone privileges for the evening. For example, avoid saying, Carla, I know I told you to wash the dishes. You never listen to anything I say. Maybe I should ask one of your friends to relay the message since they're the only people you pay attention to. A simpler directive might sound like, Carla, the dishes need to be washed or you'll lose your phone privileges for the evening. Use positive phrases. The method you use to make a request can have a major impact on whether your teen listens. Instead of using overly negative words and phrases, shift to more positive language. For example, instead of saying, don't shout, you might gently say, inside voices, please, rather than saying, you're doing that wrong. When your teen is cleaning, try something like, hey, let me show you an easier way to do that. For example, instead of saying, don't shout, you might gently say, inside voices, please, rather than saying, you're doing that wrong. When your teen is cleaning, try something like, hey, let me show you an easier way to do that. Suggest a limited number of options. Teens want to be seen as mature and capable. With this in mind, make yourself heard and increase the likelihood of your teen responding by opening the floor up to let them take part in more decisions. However, keep the options to a limited number of approved choices you'd like them to pick from. For example, you might say, which chore would you like to tackle? Washing the car, vacuuming, or folding the laundry. Limiting their options gives your teen a choice in the matter, but reduces the likelihood that they'll whine or be argumentative. For example, you might say, which chore would you like to tackle? Washing the car, vacuuming, or folding the laundry. Limiting their options gives your teen a choice in the matter, but reduces the likelihood that they'll whine or be argumentative. Make occasional eye contact. When it comes to talking to teens, a good balance of eye contact can go a long way. Avoid staring your teen down, but, at the same time, be sure to occasionally meet their eyes. As a rule of thumb, aim to make more eye contact when you're listening than when you're talking. As a rule of thumb, aim to make more eye contact when you're listening than when you're talking. Schedule the talk if it's a serious or tough subject. An impromptu discussion lowers the odds that your teen will be prepared to give you their full attention. 
rather than starting a serious talk out of the blue, try to give them some notice. This can be as simple as saying, after you finish your homework, come back downstairs so we can have a chat, okay? If they know that you're interested in talking ahead of time, they may be more receptive to listening. With less serious talks, it's okay to just dive right in without scheduling ahead. This can be as simple as saying, after you finish your homework, come back downstairs so we can have a chat, okay? If they know that you're interested in talking ahead of time, they may be more receptive to listening. With less serious talks, it's okay to just dive right in without scheduling ahead.